of Roman Egypt. When was that exactly? Exactly in the year 34 BC. 34 BC. Make it 30. So we have 3330 BC. Yeah? 30 BC. What does BC stand for? I'll tell you something funny. I was talking to some Americans before, I was telling them about this. I said, excuse me, Shan, what, what does it mean BC? What does it stand for? Before Columbus? <laughs> <laughs> so BC, which means that something will happen soon after that, the birth of Jesus, and Egypt will turn gradually to a, a Christian country. Yeah? Christianity was introduced to Egypt officially by St. Mark, in the year 61 AD, make it 60, double the number 3, yeah? 60 AD, and it will take almost three centuries for Egypt to become a Christian country or what we call Coptic Egypt. I'm not going into the details of any of those. Coptic Egypt is uh, Coptic, the word Copt, yeah, is, means Egypt. Yeah, and the word Coptic, by the way, was given to the Egyptians by the Arabs when they came here later on uh, uh, in the year 641 AD, 600, also again double the number, 3, 600, when they came here and they found all the Egyptians, or most of them, practicing Christianity, they, they were calling the Egyptians, like when you go to uh, uh, Britain and say, Brits, yeah? Or when you call the Americans Yankees, or when you call German Germans, or Saudi Saudis, and so on. So they were calling the Egyptians Copts. Why Copts? Because Copts originally from, formed originally from the word Egyptus, Egyptus, Egypt. So they were calling them Egyptians. Yeah? Copts. But matter of fact, those Egyptians were the Copts, they were practicing Christianity. So later on, those who convert to Islam became Muslims. Those who remained Christians kept the original title Copts. That's why every uh, 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 Copt is a Christian, yeah? but not every Christian is a Copt, because the Copts are the Egyptian Christians. This is what you read in most of the books, but let me correct it. All Egyptians here today and everywhere in Egypt are Copts. <laughs> Muslims or Christians, we are Copts. We are all Copts. Yeah? This is the idea we are trying now to explain to the people who live in Egypt today that we are all Copts. Muslims or Christians, because we are all Egyptians. Yeah? But anyway, when you read this terminology, Coptic Egypt means the Christian era of the Egyptian history, which started around 380. Uh, of course, we'll talk more about uh, Coptic Egypt and the building of monasteries, which was started and evolved in Egypt, the beginning of uh, Christianity, around the first and the second century AD, and introduced to Christianity worldwide, uh, the monastic life, which was created and developed here in Egypt, and so on. So, 3330 BC and then 660, 60, uh, 300, 680. This is very briefly the history of Egypt. Briefly. Those are the major people. So when we go into or under each title of them, we have Old Kingdom, New Kingdom, and Middle Kingdom, the Pharaonic Egypt, and so on. So there are more details in each uh, uh, period of history. Uh, the question is, which, is, which will be the last thing uh, I will finish with my lecture with, how do we study Egyptology? How do I know about that subject and standing now in front of you telling you about the history of Egypt? How do we study it? We have maybe three sources. All what was left by the ancient Egyptians, documents either on papyrus or uh, uh, drawings, uh, Statues, uh, tombs, everything. Yeah? And the Greek historians, and the early travelers to Egypt, who wrote about Egypt like Herodotus, who came to Egypt 500 BC and wrote about the building of the pyramids and describing life in Egypt and so on. Okay? Uh, Plutarchus and many others. 
and then the Bible, the Quran, all the holy books in general, who mentioned, uh, which mentioned uh, some stories took place in Egypt, like Moses and the Exodus, mentioned in the Bible, and and uh, well, let's say the Old Testament and the Quran, like the story of Joseph, the man of the coat of many colors, yeah, and uh, the coming of the Israelites, mentioned in the Bible and also in the Quran. So should be source of knowledge to us. Uh, to be quite honest, with all my respect to the holy books, they are not history books. They mention those stories, let's say, the story of Moses, not to tell us the, about the history of Moses, but to learn the morals of the story, the good and the bad and, and uh, whatever. Yeah? So that's why the Quran or the Bible never mentioned the name of the Pharaoh. Never mentioned it. Some people say, ah, oh, it was Ramesses II, and then someone from around the corner is coming. No, 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 it was not Ramesses II. Why do you say Ramesses II? Because of 1, 2, 3, 4. Why do you say he's not Ramesses II? Because of 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, so it was Tutmosis. No, 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 he was not Tutmosis. So it was Amarhatib. No, 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 he was not Amarhatib. There's always a debate about who's the Pharaoh of Moses or the Pharaoh of the Exodus, because it never mentioned in the holy books 